Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of a It's to high. Yeah. 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 Ye
or who, where they come from. If you don't know the name, go get your research from Ekhaya. Do your research. Find out who is this person that they saying I am carrying their gift. If you can find out about their personality, do so. Because I always say that sometimes when it chooses you, it always chooses someone that is a total, you know, replica of who they were, you know, in terms of behavior, in terms of sometimes it can also be the total opposite. But sometimes you also take on a few characteristics that um I might have been to, you know, carry, you know. For example, for me, um Unkomo was very blunt and I think I'm blunt. I call it spader spaders. Yeah. And I have no non I don't tolerate any nonsense. And um you know I don't want someone to sniff on my toes, you know. And it takes a while for me to to to, to forgive and forget. You know, um it's those um type of traits that you see that when someone is like yo like when a major slap you know or you carry your rosy the way it, it is it is all those little things that are big. So what I'm trying to say is that not all of them are like a total new character but it's something that you know when you guys are being compared there are certain similarities to it. So once you know what you are to like and etc then you get to understand them better because now you it comes to the situation of now Uma Uyo Pata because the problem that often happens to most of us is that you're being told Hambu Pata is and remember Uyo Pata is to all these ancestors announcing that yo guys I'm accepting the calling because what normally happens is that if you have a calling it was like it will be in the forefront literally waiting like this in your face well Ukok Georgina is like no um you have to do this for then it's it's like not now she first has to answer this I get what you see you want to give her that you want to do that but before you can access all of she can access all of these things let her fix this because this will will make that prolong so you go there as Kangen Sako, Thomas and Boko Kum could give me um poverty. Why go to Kuminanga for um some Boko Kuminanga? I'm sitting on the chat of Mr. Bates. And then you go and we are humble. Then the alien one may just stop us in a small ending. It is a lady. I'm on your majosi and it's crazy. That is why sometimes you find you find women to maybe there's a certain place a part of two if you like it a lady um and then there's also another space um la a pasilla walk a my josie and it, like that is why because I'm just I have to go because once you understand you see the type of dozy that I carry, then you get to understand the dynamics. You go to all oh, the kind of energy or the kind of spirit they walk with is the, the you know what 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 element are they? Are they water energy? Are they fire energy? Are they earth energy? Are they wind energy? You get to understand all of those dynamics. I get it. So now when I'm decoding it, I'm like because you guys like the 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 boring terms, all of these other things. You get to now understand better. <laughs> it was like we will open it better but now most of people we tend to go through our callings not understanding our guides and that is why we suffer great mental health or sometimes depression and um it is always sometimes rooted from it was like because sometimes your body will react to how it was like is feeling so you will wake up one morning feeling like yo today i'm not having it or for the rest of the time you are focusing on the spiritual things you're literally in depression so there's a level of frustration that there is between someone on a josie and the josie itself there's a level of uneasiness or there's a level of not understanding there's no connection you know because once there's connection between the two of you guys you start to embrace your journey better and everything starts to make sense even when you have to wake up when this is just a josie it does not feel like a drag i don't want to lie life of Josie is a lot it's too much and then sometimes i'm like oh my gosh but i remember that yo oh my god you have to do this you have to do this but coming back to what I'm telling you is that
fluctuations of mental health and all of these things and yes it is perfectly normal but it becomes a problem if it's deeper now you can't find any peace in your life ever since when you feel the way you do and it's sad if you are here and you're watching this video and you're angry at Ilozilako, just admit that you are angry because literally when Ilozilako says go left you're like i'm not doing that shit i'm going right that is it happens it's just that we don't vocalize it we don't do not open up, up we don't open up about that we don't talk about that there are people avatata in the because they were forced to do so and you're not happy you're just doing this because i mean you yeah, understand that and i am here today to tell you that it's okay but you have to understand that you need to identify where the root of the problem is there is nothing that brings peace to your spiritual journey than having a connection or a communication with Ilo Zilako one way or another. It doesn't mean have tea with Ilo Zilako, but have that understanding. Because once your spiritual journey feels like a night, a job to you, then you must know that mm, something is not right. And there are some people that have answered Ubi Zolago and they are literally in the pits their life is in the pits they are angry at their daughters literally your life is a circle of frustration there is a certain level that you need to fix because remember there's also ancestral trauma so that's why i say sometime before you embark on a spiritual journey it's very important that you get a spiritual expert and you get to understand your ego before you jump into the deep level the deep level <laughs> the deep level the deep level is is now because now that is also going to open another can of worms and you're going to feel frustrated and listen to me if you're going to walk this journey frustrated and depressed how are you going to heal people how is it going to happen because a lot happens yes your life is a diary of notes you heal others through your life experiences but now if you don't heal from anything and you're frustrated to the person that brought you where you are how are you going to see the goodness or the life of people that you may have it is really sad. So there just needs to be a level of peace and understanding. And that's why I would say it's important to get spiritual mentorship or guidance from somebody that can assist you with your journey or even yourself. Sometimes just be open about it and just take your candle. Whom are you going to because near Tanda is Ghana or the mountain or the river, wherever you're going, go there and speak to your guide directly. And speak to them directly means that you can never Albertina, Nizalana. We need to talk. And if there is any way you wrong come back to your center and fix that. The journey of spirituality is not a destination. It is a journey, literally. I not destination because you pass on the baton to those that come after you. So there needs to be a peace. Sometimes we walk so much in our ancestors' footsteps that we experience everything they experienced before you can start experiencing your journey. Your that is heavy. You will experience everything if their life was just a bundle of this because i don't want to lie to you if you're being promised creams and strawberries you are being lied to that's not how the spiritual journey is it is bananas and pop <laughs> it is never strawberries and cream but i want you to know that you are going to be fine um, I remember we joked about this um, with my friend and we like, yo, one happy pill a day keeps the doses away. Because <laughs> you, you, you start to immerse yourself in being unhappy. 
can can we be happy in our gifts can we be happy in our journeys it is not easy but i believe that if we are going to be there for each other it's going to make more sense you don't always have to go sometimes just go there to exude everything that you're feeling cry it out laugh it out scream it out sex it out but that does it only happens to a certain extent but you have to deal with what you're feeling don't go around your emotions go through them because remember the calling on its own comes in so many phases. It, it is in phases. It is never ending. You get called and you go through so many phases. The first phase, you be like, yeah, I got this. And you trying to have a calling. And the, the coming phase is you say, ooh, ay, ay, ay. That's what the you know, phases of the calling. What you can say, now I have found myself and this is where I'm going. Don't be one of those people that say, I'm waiting for my idiot to show me. Probably your dose is not showing me anyway because you guys have some unresolved issues or unresolved matter. Or even it's family based. So if you don't have patience with idiot, you don't have patience with anything, it's going to be hard for you in this thing called spiritual journey. It needs your 150 so yes i'm not complaining but i look back at that and i'm like i'm grateful yes i'm going through life's dynamics you know or someone my age but it's not how i would have gone through all of this if i didn't answer the point if it didn't come the way did. my phases of look listen 20 um 2010 was my first first phase first phase of the point it was the pits. It was hell. Four phases later, 2016, I went and, and, and started my initiation process. So, you, you understand that my niti, it comes in different ways for different people. But you know yourself better. So, if you are here and you know that there's some angles of matter, fix them because these headaches that they say you are getting, you can just go to when you have them. Sometimes it's not just you sick, it's your body reacting to everything around you or even the energy you carry. Look at how you are sick, the way you are sick. You understand that? I would say sometimes with, 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 with especially if you carry female accidents or your parents will show you pain. Your parent pains will be the pits. If they are on their worst behavior, they will show you the pits. Literally, it, it, it can be anything. Literally, you will lose interest in sex. Carrying male assets is the worst. When it's the, them and their issues, you start looking like John and not even look like a Pope. Yeah, those days come. Those days come. We might be, yay, yay. <laughs> we might be glitting and glamming, but. When we like it, 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 it should hit the bag. It's nothing like what it seems. So you don't want to be those people. I want you to forgive yourself. I will be the lana who I need to and I will be Zana. I am Andy Wabisi Amazi. I am the That's the song that you need to sing. You don't ask for what you have. You were born with your gift. Forgive yourself if your life went south. Forgive yourself. And I, I say, you know what? You feel a bit dirty, but I share it with my family. My body is okay. Bang on and you do that. You get it. You put your hands together. Go for it. It's okay. It's my story. Cause someday I'm gonna tell someone about it and be like, you know, that's what we have. So don't ever expect to do something else. Right.
a long conversation long long conversation or me cleaning having a long conversation driving i'm having a long conversation with my mom yeah yes i'm talking to they are you who brought them sometimes i go in and google let my candles take my snap chill die and then my test that's me that i call him and he wants to go for five you know i'm gonna you understand the relationship we build me understand it it's not a take relationship but it's a take it's an exchange it's a love situation and in the, at the end of the day i'm gonna do one thing so if you're in the end of the world tell out which is Sometimes it's a sort of taking generation and generation we run a trust. And by the time you trust away now, there's so much anger built. And by the time you go get you, it's like you need to do this or if you don't, I'm gonna crush your skull. Um literally because they fear also the, the disappointment of having to be constantly someone to answer their calling. That's very embarrassing. It's very embarrassing, I don't want to lie. So the reassurance needs to be there, the relationship needs to be there. Yo, I got you guys, we are going to do this. Yes, I'm taking home service on my desk. What else do you want? You know, once that a relationship becomes better, your communication and sound will be better. In the Boyako will burn better. Your candles will burn better. You will feel better. You will wear your beads of pride. You will wear your values of pride. You will be like a man to buy. So, the question still stands. What is your relationship with people's Lako? How is your relationship with people's Lako? Are you angry? Are you satisfied? Do you have reservations? Do you have regrets? Do you feel like it was too soon? Do you feel like, mm, yes. if I do this, maybe you do that as well. Are you doing it for the wrong reason? That's I suggest you go back to the question. And building a proper project. And start being honest to yourself. Mm. And don't yeah, do something for me. That's what I want to say to people. Because you don't want to be able to do it. It's your first <laughs> life's marriage. If you're not ready for the type of marriage, you don't want to be able to do it. Because signing that contract and not being able to do it. You don't want to be able to do it. You don't want to be able to do it. Coming from a good place, I know what I do. I know what I'm talking about. So I don't want anybody to post you see, posting, I'm about to do it. I don't want 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 like learning and stuff. I don't know what I'm saying. But 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 take a go to the go to the hospital. You take a 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 go to what is the relationship? Who is it? What is the relationship? What is the direction? Where do you need to go? Are there things you need to sort out? Is there unfinished business? Maybe it's that go ahead. Reservations are hard and they yeah, it's your duty having trust issues. It's a lot of things, guys. I'm not just sensitive, I always say they're very sensitive. And that is why also as a therapist not to be a very sensitive. We are emotional people. We are the way we are because of the energies that we carry and the people that got us. So I want nothing but the best for you. And I hope you will go and reflect and use your time wisely. Use your time, your passion. If so, trust you and you still, it's okay if you will trust you to get but you're still angry with you that go. You have 10 years to trust you and you don't even know how it feels to have a point to make you stop. You don't know the connection. You don't know the warmth. You don't know the love. Realizing there's a problem means there's a way forward. 
So let's not look at this as a job, but a calling. Thank you so much for coming to, to watch this video. I am probably the advocate of Easy and I'll see you in the next class. And that is it for today. Thank you so much. Continue to watch and branch on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't done so. Leave your comments down below and also like this video. Thank you so much. I wish you love and light. For myself, the advocate of Ego Z for God who call me a shahaba. For my mother's lady, I am definitely signing out. And from me to you, tell me. I'm going to try to keep this brief. So there's a current furor, ruha. There's a current anger in South Africa about a potential 1 billion rand that will be going to sponsor the English Premier League team Tottenham Hotspur in England in the United Kingdom. South Africans are angry because we're dealing with load shedding and energy issues. We've got potholes. We've got crime and 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 etc. and the other. I haven't looked into the details on the deal, but I've been part of conversations regarding this deal with some people on WhatsApp, some people on social media and other platforms. The Minister of Tourism currently in South Africa is Rindi Wesisu, who was gunning to be president of the ANC, but uh, unfortunately she wasn't even nominated at the ANC National Conference in December. Ms. Cyril Ramaphosa got his second term as the president of the ANC. I went on Twitter and I saw a piece where apparently the acting CEO of SA Tourism, Temba Kumar, was speaking about this deal. One of the things he emphasizes is that no contract has been signed as yet, but he is aware of the deal and the conversation, and he's one of the people that went to the UK to discuss this deal. Try to emphasize to South Africans that the money for this deal is not money that is meant to go to energy. It's not money meant to go to potholes, but come on. For some of us that know, the budget is the budget, and if there are priorities in this country like energy, it almost makes sense that certain budgets need to be taken and put towards those things. So he can say, look, this is not budget for energy and portals, but as a South African taxpayer, I would rather prioritize things that are important to my livelihood, to my food going rotten, to someone that's on oxygen struggling, to cars that are constantly crashing and traffic lights because there's no lights. I would rather prioritize that as a taxpayer then be told by government and other stakeholders that you are, but this is not part of the budget. It's important for that. So I just want to say that. Tim Bakumalo also announced that South Africa's got 24 global uh, tourist destinations they're currently looking at. Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of South Africa, has said that he would like to see 21 million tourists coming into South Africa by 2030. The Britain, the United Kingdom, uh, not the United Kingdom, Britain, Britain England, Apparently, is our biggest international tourism partner. For South Africans that don't know, Temba Kumar didn't say this, something I was discussing in some of the groups I'm in. If you look at the data, I think from 2014, 2015, 30% of tourists in South Africa, 30, no, 31% of tourists in South Africa are from Zimbabwe. 30% of tourists in South Africa are from Nigeria. He said that, Temba Kumar said that I think in Britain we get 500,000 visitors a year and I think I stand to be corrected I may have seen a figure of something like 9 million 9 million visitors into South Africa every year Jovan Nisho 31% from Zim 30% from Nigeria those are the people that actually spend the most amount of money here some of them obviously may work here may have businesses here so they may take some of the money home but they are the biggest tourists we have in this country and I don't understand why they're not prioritizing some of those people what these guys are looking to do like I said I haven't read the details but my understanding they're looking to sponsor Tottenham Hotspur, and what Temba Kumaru said in this briefing was, what happens when people see this is it causes or it shows an attention or shines a spotlight on the international community, and then South Africa or South African tourism can then articulate. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to invite people to South Africa, etc. Rwanda under Paul Kagame has done the same, and they claim that they've seen success. I think the number I've seen is an 8% increase in tourism. I've had arguments with various people speaking about marketing and different types of marketing. I had a conversation with my brother Penson on the virtual Nkuku where he was breaking down because he's in the media marketing space, how you can actually funnel down certain advertising to certain spaces. Temba Kumaru says they might see a reach of 600 million people because sports is huge and especially the English Premier League. For me, it does not make sense to be 
marketing to 600 million people if 90% of them probably can't even afford international travel and if the bulk of them probably can't even see or don't even care about visiting South Africa. That one billion rand, in my opinion, could be better used to maybe fund a Trevor Noah who travels around the world, has an audience that listens to him and video and speaks about the beauty of South Africa as a tourist destination. Someone like Black Coffee who also travels internationally around the world. Some of our brand ambassadors or brand ambassadors as South Africans, Charlize Theron, Tusom Bates and other such people could speak about the beauty of South Africa to people and in spaces to the intended audience. It doesn't make sense where 99% of people that watch the English Premier League have never been on an international flight. So what if they see that? You want to zone in on the people that are looking to travel or maybe searching on travel websites, etc, etc, so that they can be like, oh, actually, maybe let's go and see South Africa. You've got YouTube channels, you've got social media channels where people can see ads in real time that are showing them beautiful scenery of our coastline, the Drakensberg Mountains, some of the game farms in Pumalanga and Limpopo, etc, etc. Soweto, Sandton City, Durban, the Free State, the, the, the Big Hole in Kimberley, places like that, Table Mountain. You show that, someone who wants to travel, someone who maybe doesn't even want to travel will see visuals like that, hear a story like that. The country of Nelson Mandela, the country where we have Nobel Peace Prize winners, the country of Tucson Bay, of Elon Musk, of Charlize Theron, of Trevor Noah, of Black Coffee, the country that gave you an amazing song such as Jerusalem or Master Keichi and Unum Tebo, the country where they shot Sarafina, uh, that was inspired maybe by the Lion King, Lebo M, the country of John Khan. That's what we should be punting, not bullshit of just fucking putting South Africa on a jersey of a team that's not even a top winning team. The argument to Temba Kumalo makes is that if you look at the top 10 English Premier League teams, all the other nine already have tourism partners. So Tottenham Hotspur was the one they were looking at and there's potentially another one that they may be looking at. One billion rand. Imagine in terms of South Africa from a leadership perspective, what this one billion rand would do to getting rid of pit toilets in schools, making sure that you close potholes, making sure that there are certain spaces that are fixed, making sure that you invest in crime. I believe as a South African, if you make the citizens happy, if you take care of your citizens, your citizens will become ambassadors of your nation. As they travel the world, they will go out and say, South Africa is actually beautiful. As they make videos like myself, YouTube, which are watched by people around the world, we will be like, I live in the best country on the planet and we can push propaganda like America. America's had, I think, over 30 mass shootings in January alone. But no one speaks about that in America. Instead, they speak about the beauty of Los Angeles and Miami and Hollywood and New York City and Wall Street. And, oh, America, the land of the home, or the home of the brave, land of the free, whatever. We don't do that in South Africa. And part of it is because you're not taking care of your people. Instead, what's happening is South Africans are angry and they want to be posting on social media. As South Africa is doing this thing that our government is failing, We've got rampant low chilling, our crime rates are bad, we want to get rid of the ANC, people come here and have a bad experience. We're going to be saying that some of the billionaires and millionaires in South Africa are going to be telling their friends, don't go there. The ANC is wasting more money, some of it might, that might end up in brown envelopes, to try and bring people in. But to be honest, it's not a good country to be in right now. The mood is not great. Fix your country and your people will market your country for you. We need tourists. We need money coming in. We know that. Like I said, why are you not investing in Zimbabwe and getting more Zimbabweans to come in and visit? Get more Nigerians to come in and visit. And make sure that when they visit, they spend money. They are buying from South Africa to take, take things home. They are watching our theatrical, theatrical productions. They are going to the beaches. They are going to game reserves, etc. How many of the Pakistanis, puzzle shop owners and these people, how many of them are being pushed to spend their money in local businesses? We're not doing that. Instead, we want to prioritize rubbish. These are my thoughts, of course, my opinions. I see some people on Twitter like, look, actually, uh, Britain spends about 50 billion a year, the tourists. So even if we get a 1% increase, uh, we will see that money paying itself off over time. There's no proof. I think, personally, this is an opinion that God feels. I think even with the Rwanda story, I don't know if there's a direct link between the money Rwanda has spent sponsoring a team to tourism increasing. 
Polka Gown has been doing amazing work in Rwanda, cleaning the streets, making the, the country investor friendly, saying that, look, this is the new Singapore. This is the new Dubai. Come in and invest. Aliko Dangote in Nigeria has tried to do the same on various platforms, saying Nigeria is Africa's biggest secret. Come invest in Nigeria. We need a Patrice Mutsipe. We need a Johan Rupert. We need a Nikki Oppenheimer. We need other business people to travel the world and say, South Africa is not just ripe for investment. Don't just come and put your money there and work the people, but please visit. Please come and see our coastline. Please come and see our people. Please buy from the people on the streets. Oh, mama, please ride in our minibus taxis, of which some of them are also de dilapidated. And the taxi industry is also not being pushed because some of them probably pay bribes. They're not being pushed to get their funky taxis and their broken down taxis off the road so that tourists that come in foreigners, whether it's African foreigners or Asian or European or American, they come in, they're like, we love the minibus taxis because the service is so good. It's instantaneous. The music is great. The people are happy. They're chatting, it's good. And we support street food. We buy art in South Africa from the streets. We go and watch movies and theater productions there. We buy some of their stuff. We love South Africa. And we, we actually almost don't even want to leave. Instead, we'll bring all our resources from the world and come invest in South Africa. One billion rand, it's not a lot of money, but it can change so many people's lives in South Africa. And like I said, I think it could be much better spent if it was given to better ambassadors and if it was put on platforms that speak directly to people that can travel, that have money, that have traveled before, that are looking for a holiday destination. And then you can be like, okay, even in the airplanes, international airplanes, airplanes around Europe, or even the, the England itself. In the plane, <laughs> these are people that are happy to fly. Play adverts. Visit beautiful South Africa. Look at the coastlines. Look at the big five, the lion and the buffalo and the rhino. Come visit South Africa. Come experience the real life Lion King. Come and see South Africans. Come and see the innovations. See some of the businesses that are running there. See some of the places that you can invest your businesses in and meet South Africans. The home, like I said, of Nelson Mandela. Wow, and people are like, oh, I think I want to go and visit South Africa. This thing of just putting South Africa on a jersey, for me, is not it. And I think it's another failure, especially after the failure.